Hello folks. Well, I've been flying Yuki lately, as you subscribers know, so in trying to find a plane that I could do stunts like my childhood ringmasters, voodoos, and thunderbirds, I decided since these are so rare and hard to find these days, I just simply gonna build one using my UFO designs. They do great stunts and I thought why not make one in Yuki fashion. Well not everything I design works the first time and this is how it went. I'm sure many of you are going to remember the slackline scenarios. Well the build is pretty simple and just like the RC versions that I have, I drew a 17 inch circle on dollar store foam board and drew a rudder. Then I placed the Cox 049 engine from the stock glider engine pod on it and just kind of laid everything out. I also placed two half inch wood blocks in between and used the screws to tighten it up, make it so I could glue that wood block to the foam board. I decided to turn that engine pod into a landing gear to keep it from being so high up on the plane and went ahead and mounted a foam wheel in the lower struts. Well, knowing that I wanted lots of control, you know, so I could do stunts, I made the elevator pretty big and cut it out. I also made a wooden bell crank to control the elevator. Next, I covered the entire foam board with clear tape starting at the rear and overlapping it so the fuel would not get under it. I went ahead then and added some trim tape to it, pushed two ball links into the edge of the wing for control and glued them in, added a tail skid and the rudder, and it all looked good. I also then used the clear tape to make the hinge for the elevator and taped that all on. I liked the pod because I didn't have to find a fuel tank for it, but when I opened it up to inspect it, I found the fuel line was off and it would not stay on. I would have never have been able to run that engine if I hadn't have inspected it. Well, a drop of Satellite City Hot Stuff CA held it on tight, so I was ready to go. I put some right thrust in it and added a big washer for weight on the outboard wing, which was to compensate for the weight of the controls. I also mounted a rudder with a little slight rudder and this to keep it tight and circled. So I figured it was ready to go, and this is how it went. Okay, go. I can't get it. Well, these UFOs need lots of nose weight. I didn't add any as I thought I actually had enough. Also, I had way too much elevator control with that big elevator. The lines also were not staying tight and the engine mount proved to be too weak on the foam. 
So I took two pieces of plywood to make a very strong engine mount, sandwiched with the foam in the middle and to move the engine a couple inches further out, and then added these washers for weight. That made it quite a bit more nose heavy. I also added more weight to the outboard wing to make it tip to the right and thus be tighter on the strings. I then cut the elevator down to hopefully provide less control. So let's see if that worked. <laughs> hey, that boy's pretty good. Oh no, we're getting goat interference again. You know, they tell me this goat jumps on airplanes and eats starter cords, but I can't see it or even know it's there. Why, well, Leah's running the video camera while trying to chase the goat away. She's doing a pretty good job. I'm still oblivious to it all and just have to wait till the plane runs out of fuel. Ha ha ha! Oh my goodness! Well, the goat actually is pretty cool and friendly. His name is Stevie, and I like him, but I think he needs a lesson in manners. <laughs> well, no harm done this time, and my UFO flew pretty well, even in this 12 mile an hour wind. So, you know, folks, if you have an old Cox 049 lying around but no plane, you might like to build one of these yourself and have some fun. Thanks a lot to Ilea for the help, and thanks folks for watching and hopefully subscribing to see what's coming up next. Stay well, safe, and God bless. This is Dave the Nightflyer, signing off till next time.